Hey guys, so today we're doing the uh, IFS install on the front of this frame. Uh, I've got my inner frame plates in place on the 48. Uh, they're tacked in for now, which is fine. Uh, and now I've got to cut the cross member for the IFS down to size to fit within the frame. Um, what makes it kind of challenging is that the where the IFS cross member is going to mount to those frame plates isn't square to anything. Uh, it's at the knee uh, bend of the frame where the frame uh, bends down for the core support of the radiator. So it makes it a little bit of a challenge because you have nothing that's 90 degrees to horizontal. Um, so everything has to be done with a level and a tape measure. So you know I think it's funny the guys that want to get into fabrication so that they don't have to do any math. I'm doing a lot of math today. So uh, I've got the uh, cross member here. Let me show you where we're at. Um, this is our IFS cross member. Nice piece, but as you can see, it's not notched or anything for the frame. So all of that, you know, it's it's left long so that you can trim it down to fit within your frame. So if we look at the frame here. This is the point at which the IFS is going to mount, right on the knee bend. So there's really nothing, uh, nothing that you can do to measure square. The top of the frame is level, uh, but the bottom of the frame isn't, and, and this bend uh, isn't horizontal or level to uh, the horizon. So what we've got to do is use level and uh, drop some plumb lines, which is what I've got on there. And uh, the next step then is to transfer those horizontal or vertical dimensions onto our cross member and trim the cross member because the cross member is going to be at an angle to match the frame rail. Uh, so it makes it a little bit challenging. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started cutting on this. Uh, I've got to transfer my measurements onto the uh, cross member and uh, notch it out. And I'm going to go long. You always want to leave your measurements long and grind, grind down to your final fitment. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, leave it at least a quarter inch long on, on all my dimensions and, um, and trim it down from there. So I'm going to get started. And everything's squared up and good to go. So it's time to tack this thing in place before we have an earthquake or something that knocks it out of whack. Okay guys, I've got you here on the uh, magnet mount so we can uh, take a look at how these arms are going to fit together. Um, before I put the uh, top hats or the, the coil spring mount onto the frame, I want to make sure that my lower control arms are straight, ball joints are in line with the center line of this cross member as they should be, uh, and try and get an idea of how the coil and the shock angle 
are going to line up into this coil bucket so that I can make sure that we're not binding the coil or the coil is not rubbing the shock. These are our lower control arms. As you can see, the ball joint is offset from the center line of the cross member. So, I, I'm not sure why these arms are like that. I know the original Mustang II front ends used a, uh, used a strut rod in the front to uh, align the lower control arm. So I'm going to hang this on here and see, uh, see where we fall at. And this is our upper control arm. Comes preloaded with a ball joint, which is kind of nice. You don't have to install those. And it has uh, the. This is the rear mount that will mount on top of the upper coil bucket or top hat uh, with some T bolts. And that's the, the adjustment. Sorry, the uh, slots in the top of the coil bucket allow for adjustment of the upper control arm so you can set your camber and caster um, by adjusting the upper control arm. So uh, what I'm going to do now is get the jack under this lower control arm so I can jack it up into a horizontal position and throw the coil spring mount on the control arm because it doesn't currently have a coil spring mount sitting on it. It's a, a separate piece, I guess, so you could use a coil over shock uh, or um, an airbag mount in place, of, uh, in place of the coil spring mount. And I think I've said before we're probably going to go with, uh, with airbags at some point. So uh, that's one thing I liked about this kit. I can make a, a really nice airbag mount and use these bolt-on locations for, for the plate, um, which makes, a, makes that nice and easy. And if something was to happen and the uh, owner of the, of the 48 here didn't want to stay with airbags and he wanted to take those out and go back to coils, um, he'll have the coils and the coil mounting pads so he can just swap out the airbag, put in the coils, and, uh, and be good to go. So let me get this all set up and then we'll uh, come back to this. Uh, and I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the welds, the quality of the materials. They're using heavy wall tubing, not some thin, flimsy stuff. Um, all the bends are very professional. The welds are, welds are w well done and professional. Uh, and it's a good heavyweight kit, which is what you want in a front suspension. You don't want some flimsy, uh, flimsy cross member or flimsy control arms holding up your vehicle. So uh, I, I'm super impressed. Everything looks top quality, uh, top notch, and uh, even like these forged machined spindles. The, uh, the spindles are universal left or right. Um, you bolt on a steering arm onto the back side of it to, uh, to use it on either the driver's side or passenger side. And uh, they're nice. They're very well machined. Uh, I, I'm super impressed with this kit. I'm going to leave it off like this for tonight. I uh, basically got to locate the upper control arm mounts uh, and coil buckets. And they need to be in the proper position to locate the spindle where we want it to. Right now it's obviously not perpendicular to the horizon. Um, I was just trying to get an idea of where the upper spring bucket needs to intersect the frame so I can kind of plan for how much I need to notch out of it. I, you know, I, I know it needs to set in quite a bit more. Um, so it's not, it, it's probably going to be a little bit lower. I think the upper arm angle needs to be down on a downward slope slightly uh, so that my instant center um, is in the correct position relative to the pivot points. So, like I said, I'm not a I'm not an expert on front suspension geometry with A arms or anything. So, uh, I'm going to do some homework tonight uh, before I tackle notching these and getting them put onto the frame, uh, so that I have an idea where uh, everything.
everything should be located. Uh, the kit does have adjuster slots in the upper control arm mounts, and the and the arm pivot can be shimmed up or well can be shimmed up a little bit if necessary, um, and adjusted in in and out for camber. Um, but I want to have it in a neutral position with the upper adjustment slots, uh, upper adjustment bolts centered halfway in the middle of the slot so that there's plenty of adjustment both ways for camber uh, and caster adjustments. So that's where I'm going to leave it off and uh, we'll pick back up with this tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been coming to my channel for Ford OBS content and I just talked to a buddy of mine who uh, also owns a 94 OBS but he owns, uh, his, his truck is a 460 gasser uh, and we're going to start doing some work on that here very soon. Uh, we have a lot of big plans for that truck so uh, it's already a bitchin' truck. I'm going to give you a walk around of it uh, probably this coming weekend when we do some exhaust work on it. Um, and I'll get a lot of video of it for you. Uh, but for this project, for the 48, uh, this is where it sits. And come hell or high water, I'm going to have this motor mounted in here by the end of the week. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.